my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. So today's video doesn't really have anything to do with Troy, but Troy's going to be in the video. That's why he's in my intro today. Um, there is a sale going on at my local library. They, I think they do this probably annually or semi-annually um, where they, I guess, sell off all the books that they don't want anymore for really, really cheap. Um, today is the day where they will just sell those books individually. There is a bag sale that is happening I think next week so I might also do a video for that but we'll see what they have to offer today and whether I think that's a good idea. So we're gonna leave now and I'll see you there. These are the audio books, I think. Yeah. This is an audio book? Those are the audio books. <laughs> this right is an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> Angels and Demons. Well, there's no point in listening to that one first. You gotta listen to the Da Vinci Code. I'm confused about why you know that. Because Tom Hanks. Thirst. Oh, this is the YA section. This is this is what you want right here. Thirst. That's what right I there. Want. No, look, these are these are all your vampire love. I never even. Oh wait. The immortals. Ooh, the fallen. That sounds interesting. I bet you it's about angel. You are correct. Oh, wow. It's about hunky angels. Hunky angels. Paper towns. Angel. Looking for Alaska. The picture life. <gasps> your favorite. Down there. Collectibles. They're like classics or something like that. Allison's Adventures. Allison? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? She Alice's sister? Probably somebody who knows this book is like hating me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that? Fancy book? Dragon Heist? Water deep dragon heist? Yeah. Oh wow. The vault. The vault in our stars. Standard service arithmetic, grade 7. Does it give you a year? Oh, no. <gasps> 1928. Wow. Let's turn. Let's turn in the middle. See. See if math is the same here. Yes. Wow. The answer is X. You need this truck. What? I concur. I concur. Or is that is that me agreeing? Yeah. Oh man. Ivanhoe. Ho? <laughs> no. 
Oh. Old Curiosity Shop. Wow, Charles. Reader's Digest. World's best reading. It's 1988 Reader's Digest. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. <gasps> I beg to differ. Yeah. What is it? Tough guys don't dance. I certainly dance. I certainly do. <laughs> I dance so hard. Another Ivanhoe. Don Juan. It's their favorite book, Ivanhoe. If this wasn't a book I already owned, this would be great. A night film. Look at this, Mr. King. Mr. King. Mr. King and his 500 books. Too. Mike says. 5,000 books. The Da Vinci Code. Oh, wow. Digital Fortress. Oh man, this guy just, is he just known for like a, like a whole conspiracy thing? Because that's pretty cool. Okay, so in here we have a dozen books? I'm not sure. Um, sorry we weren't filming the entire time, but these are really heavy and nobody can hold the camera. So I'm going to do a really big haul when we get home. I think I, I spent around $7 for all of these books, and that is partially thanks to just the lady being very kind, because it probably would have been a little bit but even still, hardly anything. So, we're gonna go home now. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are back home at my desk. This box behind me has 17 books in it and I paid $7 for all of these books that I'm about to show you. Um, just a heads up, most of them are in pretty good condition, but there were a couple that I picked up that weren't in like great condition, but I wanted them anyway and they were like 50 cents, so like how could you go wrong? So if I end up really liking those books that I got that aren't in the greatest condition, then I'll just repurchase them, you know, in a better condition later but anyway let's get started with this huge freaking haul so the first one i'm going to show you is the lemon collie life of annie astor by scott wilbanks so i actually hadn't heard of this book before but i mean the bright yellow cover really drew me in and when i read the kind of catch line on the back which is annie's new pen pal has been dead for over 70 years of course i was interested turns out this is a time travel fiction novel so that explains that so this follows the protagonist annabelle or annie who one day finds a 1890s kansas wheat farm in her modern day garden. Appearing with this garden is this sort of antique um, bronze mailbox that shows up and Annie begins to receive mail or letters from this school marm, Elspeth. That just really drew me in. I thought the cover was great and it seemed like it had some pretty delicious reviews. So we'll see how that goes. Also, do you like the fact that you like really can't see my eyes? I feel like it adds an air of mystery to this video, so you're welcome. Also, very good condition. There's only a little bit of cracking on the spine, which is fine because it, inevitably my books end up with that anyway. The next book I picked up was The Cuckoo's Calling by J.K. Rowling. This was the book that she published after um, she did Harry Potter, obviously, and it was under a pen name, which was Robert Galbraith, but then she ended up revealing it was her anyway. But this is an adult crime mystery thriller novel and it's about an investigation that takes place after a supermodel falls to her death from a balcony in London and her brother basically hires a detective. I've heard mixed reviews but I'm honestly not sure if that's because the book deserves mixed reviews or if people are just extra harsh on it because it's written by JK Rowling and they obviously probably aren't used to this style of writing from her. So I'm curious to see about that. I probably just won't get to it for a little bit because I'm now coming out of my mystery binge period so we'll see when i get to this but i am excited to finally have it on hand once again excellent quality there's really nothing wrong with this book there's a little bit of like uh wearing here but literally like you would find that in barnes and noble so okay next up we have the martian by andy weir i actually already saw this movie because my dad wanted to see it so we ended up going and seeing it so i kind of already know what it's about but if you aren't aware it's a sci-fi novel basically it follows mark who is one of the first people to go to the moon and because of a freak 
dust storm accident his team ends up leaving him there um so he has to try to survive by himself so it's really interesting obviously um and i had a fun time watching the movie because it just it makes you think about what you would do if you were in his situation which in my case not being a scientist i would just die but it's interesting to see a protagonist who is smart enough to at least try to live Okay, the next book I got for all of you romance fans was Fever Song by Karen Marie Moaning. I've been hearing about this series for a really long time. I'm not sure if I'll get to this book for a while because I do have other romance books that are higher up on my list, like the books that Troy got me in that video we did together where he picked out romance novels for me. If you don't know about that video, I highly suggest watching it. It's hilarious, so click that link. But anyway, I am just curious about this book. This is one of the paperbacks that I got that isn't in great condition. Um, it's definitely not the worst, I would say, but it's definitely not the best either. However, it was 50 cents and I've been wanting to read the series or at least try to read the series. So I figured this would be a good place to start. Um, I don't know what it's about, but I'm going to read and then I'll let you know. Ah, uh, I think this is the last book in the series. Yeah, so I can't read this right away. Um, I, I guess I thought this was the first book in the series. Well, I have it now, so. So, moving on, the next book I got was The Cellar by Natasha Preston. If you've never heard of this book, it's actually a series now. It's definitely mystery thriller. Um, maybe you would even categorize it as horror. Um, but basically, it's almost similar to The Butterfly Garden in that it's about a man who collects kidnapped girls and keeps them in his cellar as the title suggests and he basically names them all different flowers so the protagonist of this book ends up being Lily. This is a book that was actually on Wattpad first and I read it on Wattpad first. Um, in fact I probably read it when it was being written like the chapters were still com coming out when I was reading it. Um, I noticed that this came out in paperback probably years ago and I never ended up getting it because I'd already read it and even though I wanted to like show my support by buying it I was also a broke teenager so I saw this at the library and even though probably none of those proceeds in any way affect the author now I have it to put on my shelf and show my support that way I don't know so the next book I got was actually another book that I hadn't heard of before um but the cover really caught my eye and that is This Must Be the Place by Maggie O'Farrell I just thought the cover was really interesting so it made me look at the back and I was interested by that too. Basically it's about a former film star who basically disappears in the height of her like stardom um, and becomes like a recluse in Ireland and the mystery I think is about why is she so reclusive and why does she make it such a high priority to keep people away from her property and I think it also follows her husband who is like drawn away by like another woman or something like that. I think it traverses many different locations and I'm always interested in books that go outside of the usual settings which in my case is America. So next up I have Atonement by Ian McEwan. I think I've seen bits and pieces of the movie but I actually don't really know what the story's about. Um, I just know that this is kind of one of those classic books that everyone sh should or has read that I have not. So I saw it at the library. It's in good condition um i didn't already have it so i thought i might as well get it It was 50 cents like i said from what i understand from the synopsis this is set in the 30s and it's it begins with a 13 year old witnessing her older sister and like the servant boy having like a flirtation and she kind of misinterprets things based off of like incomplete notions about romance uh and so that causes some really big problems for these other characters and and stuff um sounds interesting it doesn't look like it's a very long book so i will be excited to read this since it is like the book you know what i mean of course you know what i mean this is a book channel okay all right next up we have once and for all by sarah dessen i have never read any sarah dessen novels i know that my friend sarah has she was really big into her but i've literally never read a single sarah dessen novel so i basically just picked this up because it was 50 cents and it was in good condition and i recognize the author so i don't i'm not really sure if i'll enjoy it i just know that 
I have it now. It's a YA contemporary romance, which I think is typically what Sarah Dessen writes, um, but this one specifically follows a girl who is the daughter of a wedding planner, so she gets to witness like a lot of different weddings, and she's very cynical about weddings and love in general, so I think it's about uncovering the reason why, and also of course there's a romance, so there's like a bad boy I think that comes in and steals her heart probably, so just in case. The next book I picked up was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larsusen. I literally have no idea what this book is about, um, but I hear about it so often and obviously the movie was a big hit. I'm confused about what the series... I don't know. I've heard great things about this. I think this is the first book and maybe once I finish this book I'll look more into how the series actually goes because there, I think there are too many books that go, like, sound like this title, and I'm confused maybe about which ones are actually in this series and which ones are not even the same thing. So anyway, I will be excited to read this finally. I guess the iconic girl that I'm thinking of, um, the one with, like, the tattoos and piercings and everything, she is, like, a prodigy that is helping an investigator try to, or a journalist, try to investigate the disappearance of a really rich family in Sweden? I don't quite understand what is going on, but it sounds interesting and it's in great condition. It's shiny and pretty and great. I did go through a couple of those like little little paperbacks and I found a couple that I actually got because I thought they were really interesting. This one is called Dead Girls Are Easy. So off the bat, kind of strange. Um, this one is by Terry Gary. If his name is Terry Gary, then that's fantastic. Anywho, assuming this is a mystery um, kind of thriller novel, it's about a girl named Nikki Sticks. So I'm starting to really think his name is Terry Gary. Um, it's about a girl named Nikki Sticks who is goth until she has a near-death experience which then gives her abil the ability to see dead people. Um, this is set in, I think, Atlanta, Georgia. So, you know, you've got all that sort of southern history and I think that's gonna contribute to this whole ghostly um, atmosphere. So basically, this is about Nikki's life post-afterlife encounter and now she's sort of dealing with her ability and solving mysteries, I guess. The ending of this synopsis on the back of the novel says, but things get even more complicated when a friend foolishly sells her soul to the devil and Nikki's new gift lands her in some deep voodoo. I'm actually truly excited for this book. Like, I might read it pretty soon. And also, it's in pristine condition. There's not even any spine cracking, so I guess whoever bought this, never read it, maybe? Alright guys, next up we have a Stephen King book, which we're following a theme I guess because in my last book shopping vlog I got Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King, uh, so this time I got another Stephen King book and this was another one of those tiny little paperbacks, um, not the best condition, the, it's a little bit broken here, you know. Um, but that's fine, because we appreciate books in all shapes and sizes. But I got The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Um, I've heard about this book before, that's why I decided to get it, because there were, trust me, there were a lot of Stephen King books. A lot of them. And I saw this one, it was in probably the best condition of all the books he had there. I decided to get it, and it looked really short, which is amazing for a Stephen King novel. The text isn't even, like, that small. So the protagonist of this book is a little girl, a nine-year-old named Trisha, who is on a road trip with her recently divorced mother and her older brother. And during one like rest stop, they, she goes into the woods and basically gets lost. And she has her Walkman with her. So she tunes into the Boston Red Sox game and listens to Tom Gordon and basically like fantasizes that he's protecting her in these woods. The twist is that there actually is an enemy in the woods who is slaughtering animals and leaving like mangled trees in its wake. So the mystery is like, what is that? Um, not looking too good for her, this little nine-year-old and knowing Stephen King, pretty sure she'll die. Just my prediction, but we'll see. Only a few more guys. We're getting there. So I found this adorable little vintage 
version of The Color Purple by Alice Walker. I have not read this book and that's sad and embarrassing so I think it's finally time for me to read it. Um, obviously not that long. The This is really good quality considering how old it looks. This edition came out in 1982 I think. I have to be honest I don't really know what The Color Purple is about and I've kind of stayed away from synopses about this because I know it's such a well-loved book and I don't want to go into it with like expectations about how it's going to go and stuff like that. So I'm not going to give you a synopsis um, but I have high hopes and I am glad I got this like pocket sized version because it's cute, it's purple, and it's kind of old so I like it. Okay so this was probably the my favorite thing I got there um, and I went to one of the small tables actually at the end and found this version of Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. I have not read this series. I do have like the cheap reprinted sort of new version of the series um, that I got at Ollie's actually so even though I have another version now it's really not that like a waste of money because Ollie's was cheap too. So anyway it's like literally it's this is the cover for the book, which is pure gold. So you have to like pull it out. Literally, it's it's like nobody even touched this book. So it's fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna pull it out now. Oh, yeah, just pure gold, like t untouched. Like the corners aren't even dented, but like isn't that amazing? This is the anniversary edition and it came out in 1996. This was a dollar, by the way. A dollar. Also, you got, I think this is Anne Rice on the back. So, that's nice. So, on the same table that I found that anniversary edition, I found these as well. So, we've got the Vampire Lestat. Great condition. There's a little bit of like dust I think on the back that I could probably wipe off. It seems like this one came out in 1997. It's the 28th printing. And then they also had the Queen of the Damned. So I obviously had to get this too and this came out also in 1997. So unbeatable. I'm not sure. I'm kind of curious. They they look like they're all a part of like the same reprinting series um, because they all have like the same pages they're all the same size they all have like sort of matching covers so I'm kind of curious if these also had like mega dust jackets too and like they just disappeared um, with time or if they just came like this and it was only the interview with the vampire one that came with that like really pretty black fancy cover I don't know either way I got all three of these for three dollars. Okay, we only have two left and they're a part of a series and these I was also very very excited about because they're a series that I've been wanting to read for a while. So if you watched my very first book haul, it was a book haul from Barnes & Noble. I ordered online and got a ton of books. I finally got the Queen of the Tearling in that book haul and while I was at the library I came across this book and this book. So this is the second book in the series and this is the third book in the series and obviously the first book is The Queen of the Tearling. So now I have the complete trilogy. Unfortunately the first book that I have, the one I bought new, Queen of the Tearling, is paperback and so is this one. So this is the only hardback book I have in the series which is unfortunate but if I end up like loving them so much that they become like a like a favorite series and I'll probably repurchase the first and the third book for to be in hardback you know but for now I mean if I got this for a dollar I got this for 50 cents like wow obviously I can't really give you synopses for these two books because I haven't read the first one but I can tell you what the first book says it's about and basically it follows a young princess who has been raised in exile and she comes back to finally claim her throne. So she has to go up against someone who is called the Red Queen and she is has she has been gifted with the tearling jewel or or sapphire or whatever thing it's represented here. Um and I guess that helps her 
somehow magically i don't know i've heard such great things about this series and now i own all three of them so i will be happy to finally read the first one and hopefully if i like it enough i will be continuing on to read these books anywho that was 17 books um once again i spent seven dollars on all of these books if you are a teacher if you are a professor if you're just somebody who likes books, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably are. Um, I would highly recommend looking into when your local libraries have these sales because I'm pretty sure that almost all of them do to clear out inventory. So you should definitely be looking into when these sales happen and don't give up when you're looking through because there will be books um, in there that are maybe a little damaged or very old but there are also likely to be a lot of the books that I just showed you they're just probably going to be a little bit hidden this is the same thing I said for Ollie's in order to save some money you just have to do a little bit of searching you know anyway guys hope you are having a great week happy Thursday or whichever day you're watching this if you liked this video please like comment and subscribe and I'll be happy to do more book hauls book shopping vlogs um I definitely enjoyed my Ollie's video so if you want more videos like this, let me know. And I will see you back here on Saturday.